In this session, I wanted to cover the power of top-down design in Fusion 360. So with a very simple example like this, you can see that I have a little mechanical uh, mechanism. And in here, I'm just going to grab this crank and drag it around. And you can see that I have a slot and that arm that follows that slot. Um, seems like a pretty simple problem to solve, although it can be a little tricky figuring out how long that slot needs to be for that follower uh, in this particular design. So we're going to go through a way that we can solve that quite easily in top-down design. And uh, th this, this workflow is very useful in a lot of different examples. So let's start off by coming over to a, a part here. And you'll notice that I have just a basic sketch. And we'll just look straight down on that sketch. Um, and in here I have a rectangle, a couple of circles, a slot, and, um, or a, a link arm with a couple of holes or circles that kind of represent the pivots there. Um, and then you'll you'll notice a couple things here. I have some parameters and some equations. Anything with an FX on in front of it means that it's some kind of equation. So if I edit this particular sketch, you'll notice that I have just a value of 1.5 inches there. However, if I look at this particular dimension, it's telling me that it's this 1.5 dimension minus 0.5. And if I look at this one, it's this dimension divided by 2. So I've got minus 0.5 and this dimension divided by 2 to get that. So you can set up some nice um, equation references here to derive your design. Um, but if I look at this, so I have my, my basic sketch. And then from here, I just started extruding out different parts. So that the beauty of Fusion 360 is I can start out with a sketch. I'm in a design. And then from here, I can just start extruding this sketch into multiple parts. And everything is referenced back to the sketch. So I don't need to do... Um, any any fi file management or any tricky things to connect these things all together. I essentially just invoke the extrude command and I can extrude. I'm just I've created this before. I'm just following the timeline to get it to a certain point. But using the extrude command, I extruded that first plate out. In fact, let's turn that. Um, well, we'll leave the sketch on for a minute. Um, I filled it at the edges and added a chamfer around the outer edge as well, just to add a little bit of flair to it. Um, grounded it down and then I extruded um, this center pin. I extruded that crank with, in fact if I look at that crank we'll see that I have just a hole cut out for that center pin as well. We'll turn those back on and then I extruded um, that arm. Now you'll notice that the arm is not in the right location and that's okay we'll fix that in a minute but it's actually just extruded off of that sketch and interfering with that particular uh, other body. And then we extruded one more, which is basically just the, the pin. And then let's go forward one more to get the other pin. So we have all the components in place, and these were done just with simple extrusions. And everything is in the right location other than this arm. So I'm going to turn that sketch off for a minute. I could come in here and say, let's add a joint that would be from um, and, and a trick here, if I hold down the command key, if I'm on uh, if I'm on a Mac, if I hold down the command key, um, you'll notice that it keeps that face active as I'm moving around, so it doesn't go away those those um, points for the joints, the joint sides. But I'm going to pick that, and I could pick out here, and would see that it would move it into place, and I could add something like a revolute there. But I'm going to show you something that, that I really like. So instead of doing it that way, everything but that part is in the right location. So I'm just going to come in with my move command. And I'm going to grab that piece. And I'm going to drag it out um, 0.2, millim or 0.2 inches because I know that's the thickness of that other part. So I just drag it out. And it's now offset the location or the, the spacing that I want. Now I can come in with what's called an as-built joint. And I can say, let's take this part and that, that pin, and we'll just lock it down as a rigid relationship. I can right click and repeat that. This one, I'm going to pick that um, crank and that pin. And this one, I'm going to say, is a revolute, and we'll pick the center there that it's going to spin around. So you can see how much faster this is for me. And I can test this. If I grab that, now I can drag. Um, and then my position here, I'm just going to revert back to the original location because we parametrically capture the history of your drags. So that's why sometimes when you do something like this and then try to put like a sketch on here, it says, do you want to revert back to the original location or do you want to continue and capture that as a snapshot? 
We'll explain that snapshot in a few minutes, but that's a pretty pretty powerful tool. So let's revert back to where it was, um, and I don't necessarily need that sketch, so we'll get rid of it. Um, I'm going to go back to my as-built joints, and I'm going to say, now let's grab this arm and that part. We're going to use a revolute, so I can pick anywhere along the cylinder that it's going to revolve about. So now I can test it again. I can drag and see that it's all updating as I would expect. Now here, before I go too much farther, I'm going to take this pin and I'm going to do a as built again. And we're going to say, let's take this pin and this part. Instead of doing a revolute, I'm going to do a slider along this edge. So now what that allows me to do is I can, let's, uh, let's just pick the center there. So now it's just sliding along that edge and in that same position. So now we'll be able to, to make sure it's going to slide as we would expect. We'll revert that back. Now the, one of the final ones, we can do an as-built that's going to be from here to here. And we'll do a revolute as well around that axis. So now when I drag this, we can see that everything is updating. And that was pretty fast for us to do, pretty easy to lay that out. Now comes the really interesting part. I need to be able to create that slot, and I don't know exactly how big that slot needs to be. So I'm just going to come in here, and I could do this a little bit more exact, but we're just going to come in here and kind of find the maximum um, spot where that's out. And I'm going to create a new sketch out here. In fact, not even a new sketch. Um, before I do that, I'm going to come in with my combined command, and it's going to say, hey, do you want me to capture the location of where this is? And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to have it um, continue. You'll notice that it adds a little snapshot, and it keeps that in that location. So the cool thing about this is I can say we want to subtract material from this part with that, that part, keep the tool, so it's going to keep that pin around, and we're going to cut it. And if I look over here, in fact, if I drag this, you'll notice that I have a hole. Well, we're going to find this other position out here. Let's just look straight on here. And we'll say that, you know, the maximum position is around right there. And we're going to do that again. So we're going to say, let's grab, um, let's grab the combined. Yes, we want to continue. It's going to capture another snapshot. We're going to say, cut a hole of, on, from that part with that part. Cut, keep the tool. So now, as simple as that, I have kind of the, the start and the end of my slot. So the cool thing with that, let's just revert back for a second. We can create a new sketch on this face. And let's make sure, I'm going to undo for a minute. Um, I'm going to make sure that uh, I have my sketches turned on overall, but the ones that I don't need are turned off. And we're going to sketch on that face. So you'll notice here that, let's just look straight on this part. You'll notice that it's projected those edges and I can pretty easily just come in and say, let's drag a line down here and drag a line down here. Looks pretty good. It looks like it didn't pick up a tangent on that other, on this side. So I'm just going to put a tangent constraint right there. And with that, we're pretty good. So let's just go to, um, let's just come here. And I'm going to say, let's extrude just click and hold to select that back profile and if I start dragging I can also just pick that front face and it'll extrude it to that face. So as easy as that I've been able to now come in and create that slot that's the overall width of this. So I have I have the position of this it's all working so I think you get the the idea of being able to take a single sketch and then from there be able to extrude multiple components and, um, and then put everything together. So the real money shot here is what happens when I have design change. So we're going to come back to that initial sketch and we're going to make some adjustments here. Let's say that this we've decided needs to be up a little bit closer to the top. Um, let's say maybe it needs to be a little bit more over to the corner. So we shift that over. Let's say that um, we're just kind of monkeying around with this. This needs to be an inch so it gets a bit smaller. And then let's say that this needs to be something like four inches. 
So we've made a, a pretty big adjustment to our design just by coming in, making a couple of dimensional changes. We return out. Let's turn that sketch off so we don't have to see it. And then you'll notice here that we have the slot is all updated based on the position that it can be in this uh, particular scenario. And everything's updated. So I didn't have to do anything. I was able to capture that from my sketch and then everything else just automatically updated. So it's a pretty cool way for me to do top-down design. I have just a single sketch that's driving all of these components. So pretty cool. Anyway, hopefully that's, uh, that's useful. I think the, the last thing that we'll do here, I'm just going to get a, a good view of this. And one other nice thing that you can do, I have um, that particular joint that I can come in and say, let's just animate the model. And you'll notice that um, I can just let it animate this model and kind of show me what's what's going on in my design and even get an angle that uh, that is on that particular joint. So anyway, hopefully that is helpful.